Mr. Agri, thanks for coming on the show. How's it going? Very well, very well, brother. My nickname is Mr. Number. So, Mr. Numbers, I'd like to get to know you. What was your favorite subject in school? Probably mathematics. I love maths, but uh, mathematics helped me to be the best in physics and chemistry too. Here in Africa, we believe like if someone knows mathematics, know everything. But my favorite subject in my blood is mathematics. Yeah. What are your interests? My interest is to use my maths and uh, science skills to change the world. In this world, the main problem is lack of good teachers. They have teachers, but they don't have good teachers. Different students that they say they hate mathematics because of their teachers, or they hate physics because of their teachers, or they hate chemistry because of their teachers. My purpose in life to help the world to love mathematics and science. So they can go in different professions to enjoy their life. If you could do anything without failing, what would you do? I will travel the world and show the world how with mathematics and science can make you enjoy life. I think like the main problem here is how to shift the knowledge, how to shift the knowledge from one person who knows mathematics to the other person who doesn't know mathematics. If you, you change the way we are educating our youth or our students, it will lead them to love mathematics. What I'll do without failure is like traveling to the world, touching every country, using my skills in mathematics and make the whole world to love mathematics. What do you think is the key to success in mathematics? First of all, confidence. I can give you a, a certain story of mine. I joined Tuta Ocean on December 26, 2018. I was the only maybe East African or African tutor there. That courage of mm -hmm. trying to teach other students from other countries, a lot of tutors fear that. They mm. feel inferior. I did my math in Africa. Maybe I cannot tutor students from other countries. So the confidence that made me try to teach students from other countries, I've been teaching students from Canada, from Austria, from USA, from Venezuela. The confidence that the maths give me is the one that makes it, I can do this. Yeah. When did you get involved in math contests? I participated in three to four contests. We have what is known as African Mathematical Tournament. We also have Global Open Mathematical Tournament. I work as a part-time teacher in one of the schools in Tanzania. I made one of my students to participate in Math Olympia. Then after the national competition, we get a representative that will go for the World Olympia. That's great. Congratulations. What tips and yeah. tricks do you have for learning math? Oh, I have a lot of tricks. What can I say? First of all, when, I'm, when I, well, I want maybe to teach a student, what I do is, first of all, to make the student to believe what I'm going to teach him or her is very simple. It's like when you're into the class, I tell the students like, laugh, you can laugh. Because what are we, we are going to start today is very simple. It's a kind of inspiration to so the students are uh, getting mm -hmm. a work there. Like, what are we going to start today? And our teacher is saying that this is very simple. So if there are parts which are difficult within, if you begin by telling them this is going to be simple, they just believe this is simple. My first trick is to, uh, to make them believe what they are going to be taught is very simple. The second one is simplify things in the smallest understandable way I can. For example, geometry. How can they find a slope? Come up with a story. You come up with something they can see. Slope mm. is the measure of steepness. So steepness, what is steepness in real life situation? You have to take math content to the real life situation so that the students will understand and will know. The third part, don't make teaching mathematics like a punishment. What is my way? My way is I'm telling them, relax, close your books, then listen to me. After they, they have listened to me, then write what you have, you have been listening, what you have mm. been understand in your own way. Mm. That way, students always get A. And most of them think math teachers are very, uh, we can say, they're very harsh. Yeah. Well, what can parents do to help their kid with lifelong learning, to maximize their lifelong learning? If a student can learn, what am I supposed to know the next year? 
what is known as pre and maybe he or she can find a way before the classes or before the year starting to find some clues which areas maybe which areas are difficult which, which areas that I, I can try to get the help maybe from a tutor or one for my brother or whatever what can you tell us about your morning routine what do you do like to start your day i arrange the day then i go to see the bookings see the bookings and to the ocean i'll have a, a session with you in a certain time a certain time and after that after getting done with my timetable for a day then i go for breakfast i go for breakfast sometimes i go for exercise after that then i go to my office what's your favorite study tip in general try to share with other students so take your summary go to other students tell them hey do you know this let me teach you so teach the other students through teaching other students you may find other students know a lot more than what you thought. Then they mm. can maybe say, oh, you have to add this. You have to add this. Then after mm. finishing, you'll come up with something very big. Then have a tendency to recall, recall several times, several times. Why do you enjoy tutoring, I agree. Doctors may touch the heart of a person. Maybe if you are sick, if you, you, you are not okay, you don't, you are not confident, uh, I'm not going to die. Then a doctor can make you change that attitude. But when it's come to, a teacher will not touch only your heart. A teacher will touch your heart, your mind, and your soul. It's like, when I say, you are, we are going to enjoy it today. We are going to start something nice today. It's like, you are getting a relief in your heart. Oh, we are going to do something good today by using coordinate geometry. But when your phone is stolen, you may find your phone, glad to the longitude that you are touching someone's soul. So I can get my phone when it's stolen by using mathematics. Then when you speak about, when are we going to use this? When you become maybe an astronaut that you are touching a mind. Oh, so these are the, are the kind of profession that I can take through mathematics. I will teach all my life. I'll teach all my life. Anyway, let me end up there. Can you share an important lesson that you learned in your career? Everyone can learn. When a child is born, it's like it's a white paper. He or she doesn't know anything. So if from there, you are starting to change a student from there, a good tutor, a student will be a fast learner because he or he, you can, we can say the mind is very, it's very clear. So you are the one to give in something nice or something bad. As a tutor, you can help by using your maximum potential. Because if you put like, I'm going to tutor a slow learner today. You yourself, maybe you must, you'll be slow tutoring. Like you are, the way you are going to prepare yourself, it will be slow. You will not be serious in preparing yourself. But if someone tells you, today you are going to meet a very smart student, mm. you are going to prepare yourself. You are going to open your books, brother, so that you can yeah. meet our students. So mm -hmm. you see, what I have seen in my career is if you want to help the students, assume that if all students are fast learners, then prepare yourself. For example, in Tanzania, we have different topics. We have our topics, we have simple topics. What my, my, my approach to those slow learners, my approach to the slow learners is teaching them those difficult topics. You know why? It's because when they understand those difficult topics, going to those small, simple topics, they may even understand them by themselves. And that will generate confidence within them. Hey, if we did this big concept, how about those small ones? Mm. So you may end up changing all the students to be smart students. So this is my advice to other tutors. Take the students or assume, we know they are, they are those grades, but assume all of your students are smart students. Be proud of your students. Be proud of your students. What is one underrated tool for teaching math? The one underrated tool in teaching mathematics is the using of the environment, the using of the environment that the students are in. For example, I want to teach the students to draw the Cartesian plane. 
the x and y axis. Then, how will I myself explain the negative x axis or the negative y axis? How will I explain to the students the positive x axis? What will I do? I'll stay at the middle of the class. Then I'll go in front, telling the student this is the positive direction. I'm going to the north from where, I, where my position is. This is the positive y axis. Then I, I go back to the starting point. I go backward to the thousands from where I was. Then this is the negative y axis. Then I go back to the starting point. I go to the left. This is the negative x axis. Then I return again to the center. I go to the right hand side to the east from where I was. Then this is the positive x axis. Then I return to the original point. In that way, the student will understand. Why? Because I did not come with a manila joining an xy axis. Because some of the students learn from what they see. If you use the class, the students during break times, they practice themselves, understand more and more the concept. So I think, I, I think like using the environment is one of the underrated tool we can use to teach students. Yeah, that's a fantastic answer because you show people, you can see it with your eyes. It becomes tangible and that's so important because people have difficulty with the abstract math, but if you make it more yes. tangible, yeah. it's going to click. What is a common myth about math that or a, a common myth about tutoring that you would like to expel? The students tend to believe that mathematics is difficult. Maybe you want to teach a certain students. What are they going to teach me? Mathematics. Oh, I will not understand. They are finding it like it's difficult, but this is coming from different areas. I can take an example of myself. My brothers were good in, econo in, in economics. So they are trying like to say, hey, don't do mathematics. Come to economics. Economics is simple. Mathematics is difficult. So I don't know if I could listen to them. By now, you may find also tutors tell the students what we are going to start today. It's very difficult. Very difficult. This is for big people like us. You can see like that. So these students, mm -hmm. the, the students are starting to say, hey, I'll not understand this because this is for big people's. So I agree. Thank you for your time. I really appreciated you coming on the show. Learning never stops. And for the students who are watching or the parents who are watching, you are available to hire on tutorocean.com. And you can help with a range of subjects like math, physics, and other stuff as well. <music>